So today I set up a custom domain and some subdomains and I figured this would be a good topic for a video because it's one of those things that can be quite tricky at first but once you understand some of the workings of it it's quite easy to set up. So the first thing you really want to do when you want to set up a domain is to purchase it. So this particular domain I got from Namecheap, codeponder.com. Um, I don't particularly recommend this place. They're kind of annoying to cancel domains from. Um, but other than that, it, they have been fine. But I haven't really found a place that I particularly like. But anyway, once you actually purchase a domain, the thing you want to go to and the thing you'll be like spending the most time with when setting this stuff up is their little record section. So in uh, Namecheap, they call it Advanced DNS. Um, and it's basically a place where you can see these records that you can set up. They might have the word A record. They may have the name C name. Um, but we can basically add and remove uh, these records. And these are the things that are going to allow us to point our domain to different places. So the basic setup of this is you'll usually create your server or your website on a particular place. For me, DigitalOcean is a place where I'll usually set up my server. Netlify is usually where I'll deploy my website. But it doesn't really matter where you set these things up. Um, usually when you set them up, it could be Heroku, it could be now, you'll get some kind of URL. So in this case, Netlify, I get a URL, but DigitalOcean gives me an IP. Uh, and this is what it looks like. And you'll notice neither of these are the one that I, I want, right? So I have codeponder.com is really what I would like to point those to. Um, and so it's, to do these things, you want to use different records. So let's start with DigitalOcean. So DigitalOcean gives us an IP address. And so for that, what you're going to do is you're going to create an A record. And you're going to put in that IP address here. So in this case, we can copy that. And we can paste it in here. And then we can put the uh, subdomain that we want. So for example here, I have three subdomains set up, uh, pointing at this uh, server. And you can see I already set this up. So I have the goaccess.codeponder.com pointed at that IP server.codeponder and www.codeponder. So all three of those are pointed at that IP address. And so we could set up another one if I wanted to, um, right? So this could be server two, or this could be my API, or maybe I want to store some static files or something, right? So we can set up different subdomains, point them at the same thing, or I could point them at a different uh, IP if I wanted to. Um, but that's how you set it up for DigitalOcean. And so I have m all these pointed at that. The other thing to note is let's say you don't want any domain, right? Or any subdomain. Like I just want to go to codeponder.com, right? And then that brings up the URL. So in this case, I actually have a redirect set up. So you can see it says a URL redirect record. And I put the at sign. So the at sign is actually um, the no, that's what that is, no subdomain. Uh, and so I have that pointing at www. So you basically re get redirected to www. Um, but anyway, that is that. Uh, so how do you actually set up Netlify? So Netlify doesn't give me an IP, it gives me an actual URL. So for those, you use a different type of record. So for that, you use a CNAME record. And here, we do the same thing. We specify what subdomain we want. So maybe I want to call this web. And then this is just a silly little website I, I did, not really related to the website or related to CodePonder. Um, but if I wanted to, I could put under the code ponder uh, thing. Uh, looks like I need to get rid of HPS, I'm guessing. And there we go. Um, so yeah, so now we have this pointed at, if I were to go to web.codeponder.com, it's going to be pointed at this Netlify URL. And now some of these places like Netlify, you can actually do some stuff on this end to actually tell them you just set up a custom domain. But usually the first thing you do is you come into your DNS and you point it at the IP or you point it at the URL of the place and then you might do some stuff over there. And that's pretty much the gist of it. You'll create different records and point them at the location of where you're hosting your API or your website. Now for me, A records and C names are the ones that I use the most. Uh, but another good one to know about is the MX record. I don't know if it is here um, or maybe it's down here. I think it may be down here. Uh, I think you have to set up a custom MX record down here. 
It might be in another place for other DNSs. But what that's for is setting up emails. So if I want to be able to send an email to like ben at codeponder.com, I would set up some records um, with my provider. Now some places do this differently. Uh, I don't know if Namecheap comes with an email. I can't remember if it does. I, either it was really crappy and I got rid of it um, or they don't provide one. So what I used instead was this place called Magid. I don't actually don't even know how to say this. Magadu maybe? Um, anyway, what they do is they let you, um, they host your email for you. So basically what you do is once you decide you want to use that place or you can pick any email hosting is you can create an MX record and you're going to point it at whatever. Uh, basically they'll give you some something to point it at. I forget if it's an IP address or if it's, I think it's just like uh, maybe just a URL that they give you. Uh, but anyway, you can point at that and then you can start receiving emails. So you can set up, pick some kind of email hosting if it doesn't come with one. Uh, so that's what I do. And that's pretty much the basics of it. I was going to mention one last thing because I've been doing it recently. It's been pretty nice. Um, so this is, I guess, a little bit more advanced, but I've been setting my stuff up with Cloudflare. Uh, so Cloudflare, you can actually have them handle your DNS for you. I haven't done this for CodePonder yet, but I have it for my binawad.com site, which I actually don't have anything up on there right now, I don't think, or it's a crappy WordPress site. I need to put something up there, but anyway, uh, you can have it handle this. How you do that is you actually set up this thing called name servers. Um, it's on the domain tab, which it's taking a while to load here, um, but you can point it at uh, custom name servers. So I can say custom DNS and put in two name servers here. Uh, and I can point it at uh, Cloudflare's, these two. And when you do that, basically you can have them handle. So here's what the panel looks like in Cloudflare. So you can have them handle the DNS for you. So I can create a record, CNAME records. This is the MX records I was talking about. So you can see here I have pointed my binawad.com at uh, Megadu there. Uh, but yeah, and then the nice part, why would you even want to do this, right? So the, the reason is not just because they have a nicer UI for this, um, which I think they do have a little bit nicer than Namecheap, but that's an aside, is what you can do is, you see this thing right here, is you can actually have it set where Cloudflare proxies. So I don't have it on right now, but I could turn it on like this. Uh, so you can toggle it on and off. And then once you have that set up, there is a bunch uh, of different features that Cloudflare offers that you can add in basically sits in front of your website. Uh, so I'm planning on using it to cache. I have a lot of stack files for a project that I'm working on right now. And I have Cloudflare that's gonna sit in front. And I'm actually just going to cache all the files in Cloudflare. And so I can set up page rules and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I wanna think they have, yeah, here it is. Service workers that you can set up for JavaScript now. Um, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. And so you have access to this. Um, and so a lot of times now I'll actually just set up with Cloudflare and use them and then use some of these tools if I need them. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of a more advanced thing. It's a CDN and really a lot of other stuff too you can do with it. Um, but you don't really need this for every website. But yeah, that is my knowledge on DNS. Um, and basically the gist of it is you set up your stuff on some entity. In my case, I use DigitalOcean, Netlify a lot. And then you just point the records at the IP or the URL that they give you.